Okay, so good morning. <coughs> so we'll continue our discussion on the administrative code. Okay, particularly the Executive Order 292. Now we'll continue. We proceed now to the general principles governing the public officers. And this is the very important part of the <coughs> discussion um, for the past uh, days. Okay, so what is the nature of a public office? If that question will be asked in your exam, the answer is a public office is a public trust and that Public officers and employees must at all times be accountable to the people, serve them with utmost responsibility, integrity, loyalty, and efficiency, act with patriotism and justice, lead a modest lives. In fact, <coughs> there is a law known as the professional code of professional responsibility of a government employee. And it enumerates this provision. If you will be asked what are, what is the nature of a public office, you have to answer like that or enumerate. What are those? Okay. Serve them with utmost responsibility, integrity, loyalty, efficiency, act with patriotism and justice, lead a modest life. And they're very important in this um, topic, I guess, of all this enumeration is to lead a modest life okay why because if you observe most of the public officers right now they view public office as their opportunity to become rich okay so well they will you will notice if they are a government employee because normally they are the rich people look at around okay it's most of those Working in government are the most powerful. They are the rich people, <coughs> highly influential. Okay, they perhaps um, ride in a luxury vehicles. But the provision, if you are working in government, states that you have to lead a modest life. What does it mean? Okay, lead by your means. If your income is just a few thousands. You don't have to buy so many luxury houses and rest houses, okay? That is the reason as well that every year, the employee should submit his sal and statements of assets, liabilities, and net worth, okay? So, we will discuss each of this, okay? With responsibility, what does it mean? That you have to serve the people with utmost responsibility. They are our clients, okay? Remember that the people are the one who pays the government employee. In what way? By their taxes, okay? So, every time they buy a commodity, uh, if they are working in a private sector, a part of their income goes to the government in a form of tax. So, we have to, and out of that, um, goodness that they give to government in return government employees should be um, responsible on what they are doing <coughs> so what are other manifestation of utmost responsibility in fact if you do not perform an act which are intended in your office either mass malfeasance misfeasance or not doing anything of things to be done or a wrongdoing, or the, you perf you fail to perform the act we should do, which you should do, then you will be held accountable criminally. Okay, so remember there are many crimes that you may commit. Okay, even in a single act, you may be held liable under this act. Okay, or under Executive Order Two Nine Two, or you may be held liable under Graft and Corrupt Practices Act or even under the revised penal code okay so there are 
other crimes that may be may may be filed against you on a single act. Okay? So under the revised penal code, there may be malfeasance or misfeasance or nonfeasance. Okay? So later on you will know you, you will be asked to distinguish what are the what are its its difference or the, the distinction between the those terms. Okay? So integrity. What in by integrity? So the um they must trust people must trust the government employee so it's as if they act with um all their acts must be reliable and then loyalty okay you have to be loyal to the country okay so as much as possible decide in favor of of the filipino not of the foreigners in fact in many cases in many laws we that the legislators passed it's always intended for the Filipinos rather than foreigner. Example of that is the ownership of uh, public transportation or mass media. Okay, as you know, in case of ABS event, it's always intended for Filipinos. Okay, and even ownership of land, foreigners cannot own except if they marry a Filipino woman, but it will be in the name of the Filipino woman that they marry. So those are indicators that it's always intended for the Filipinos. And that's proof that the loyalty, that proves loyalty. So in 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 event where there are two applicants, a foreigner and a Filipino, we should favor the Filipino. And even in labor laws, okay, foreigners cannot work in, in, in the Philippines, okay? And the exception is that when they get a permit from the Dole, okay? And although they get a permit, but they have to train a Filipino citizen such that later on there, there will be transfer of technology. How about efficiency? So again, uh, we have to be very efficient. Uh, um, report on time. We should not be late. If we are working in government and under the implementing rules, if a government employee will be late for 10, 10 days in a month, for three consecutive or two, then that is considered tardy. Okay? So it doesn't mean if you are late only for one day you are tardy. No. Under the rule, um the tardy is defined as, or tardiness is defined as abs uh, being late for three uh, for ten times in a, a three or two consecutive months. I think three months. <coughs> Act with patriotism and justice, okay. Always think what is just and what is favorable to the country, like patriotizing our product, okay, loving the country and and the products made by Filipino citizen. What is the reason to help also our our talents, the talents of the Filipinos to be improved? Someone wants to join the call meeting. Admit. Okay. <coughs> what was that? Is that a name? T T L D B meeting. What's that? I don't understand. Somebody joins and the name is T V. Is uh, are you a student? In the one in, in, huh? Are you a student? Is it normal? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, nine I recorder. Oh, okay. See, I thought I'm also recording, and that's why I have two screens there. I record a screen using my cell phone because there is no record here in my in my Google Meet, so I record it through the cell phone. So, but actually, you can record it, okay, with, with my permission, of course, because you know, um. It it will be it will be me who will be published. Um, it will that it's my face that will be published later on. So it mu there must be a permission from me. So we go to the next lead the modest lives. Okay, what does it mean? You sh should not have to display. Okay, it's not allowed to um instantaneously display your wealth. 
like wearing of so many bracelets, gold bracelets and necklaces, um, it would not appear to be an ideal of a government employee. In fact, it would encourage um, corruption. People who will be dealing with this government employee might say, oh, this is the tax of the people and he is now buying, <coughs> buy, and he used it for, for buying those these um, gold necklaces and bracelets. So maybe a one um, accessory, a ring, is enough. Not more than that. What's the reason behind that? People might be encouraged to imitate what you're doing and then perhaps they will do the same, corrupt, corrupt the money and buy some luxury items or accessories. Now we go to the, the policy on change of citizenship, public officer and employees owe to the Senate and the Constitution allegiance at all times. And any public officer and employee who seek to change his citizenship or acquire the status of an immigrant of another country during his tenure shall be dealt with by law. In fact, if you are working in um, national government and if you acquire a green card holder or become immigrant of another country, automatically you resign or you become disqualified. Why? Because... Well, in Supreme Court case decided where an, I think a congressman who acquires a green card holder, it's a, he was disqualified. The reason is that um, you cannot serve a country where one of your foot is in another country. Okay, meaning if the problem arises later on, you, you just lift your one foot on on, on in the Philippines and you become now a resident of another country so that is not a good example of a government employee okay so you will leave our country later on if there is a crisis okay and you are now a citizen of another country a good public officer is the one who will die in serve our country not that one foot is not is in another country or somewhere else where in case of trouble, you just lift your foot in the Philippines and you are now a citizen of another country. Now, declaration of assets, liabilities, and net worth. Okay, every employee, public officer, are, should submit this one. Okay, in our case, we submitted it um, before April 15. Okay, so it's, a, it's in the law. A public officer employee shall upon assumption of an office and as often as there, often thereafter, as may be required by law, to submit a declaration under oath his asset liabilities and net worth. Okay, what is uh, the consequence if a government employee will not submit his asset liabilities and net worth? Uh, he may be held administ administratively liable in a case of a Supreme Court justice where she failed to to submit her assets and liabilities and net worth um i think she was impeached or she lost her integrity which is one of a qualification of a supreme court justice so another ethics in government all public officers and employees shall be bound by the code of ethics to be promulgated by the civil service commission Okay, so there is a law okay, known as the Code of Ethics or Code of Professional Responsibility which enumerate okay, the one I said, okay, the enumeration I mentioned a while ago, okay, the eight, okay, which I would like you to memorize okay, <coughs> and know by heart its meaning. So inhibition against purchase of properties at tax sales. What does it mean? No officer or employee of the government shall purchase directly or indirectly any property sold by the government for non-payment of any tax, fee, or other public charge. Such purchase by an officer or employee shall be void. Why is it so? It would appear that what you had vested interest, okay, 
you want to foreclose it so that you can get the, the you can buy the property at lower price okay so if the property is not the tax is not paid or there was no um th there are liabilities of the owner the government employee is not allowed actually it's prohibited by law okay well, for example um especially those where the government employee is a party to the foreclosure of the of the property okay like for example the BIR employee purchased those lands that were not paid no that is not allowed okay so they should inhibit what do you mean by inhibit um you 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 distance yourself Okay, do not get involved in, in the purchase of that. So, inhibition against the purchase of property at tax sales. Okay, that is the meaning. No officer of the government shall purchase directly or indirectly. Okay, what do you mean by indirectly? You, you let your parents or your wife buy the property, but it's after, actually your money. It's indirect. It's not you who buy the property, who buys the property, but it's your relatives. It's still a... A, a prohibition because of the word here directly or indirectly now we go to the powers incidental to the taking of the testimony when the authority <coughs> okay to take testimony or to receive evidence is conferred upon any administrative officer or any non-judicial person committee or other body such authority shall include the power to administer oath Someone witnesses and require the production of the documents by a subpoena duces tecum. What do you mean by the, the word sub, subpoena duces tecum? To produce evidence. Subpoena is the production of evidence. Okay, documents. Now, and, and the other testimony, the other evidence is for you to testify. It's called the subpoena ad testificandum. Okay, for the production of evidence, documentary evidence, that is called subpoena duces tecum. Now, we go to <coughs> liability of superior officers. Okay, sometimes this is called the command responsibility. What is the liability of the higher officer if the one who committed are the are its subordinates? Okay, will he be liable? Okay, just like in the military, right? Like. For example, in the case of Putin, will he be held liable over the acts of his of his soldiers like raping uh, women? Okay, will be held liable. Okay, under that, so we're going to discuss that one as uh, as an explanation of this topic liability of superior officers. So all public officers shall not be civilly liable. Okay, for acts done in the performance of his official duties. Unless there is a clear showing of bad faith, malice, or gross negligence. So that's a general principle. A public officer shall not be held civilly. What they mean by civilly? Payment for damages only. Okay? So it's not, it's not, dist distinguish that from the word criminally. The word here is not civilly, but doesn't mean he cannot be held liable c criminally. A public officer shall not be civilly liable for acts done okay, in the performance of his official duties. Now, the safeguard of, of those government employees that if they do it <coughs> in the performance of their duty, okay, they do it during the official time or even if it is not official time but the act is still in performance of your duty based on his job description, then he cannot be held civilly liable, okay? Unless, the exception here, there is a clear showing of bad faith, malice, or gross negligence. Okay, but if it is done in bad faith, what in by bad faith? You know the consequence, you know it's illegal. Um, you, you know it is not in your official function, but still you do it. That, you, that means you are in bad faith. Uh, malice or gross negligence you know you know it is your job but you are so negligent okay and distinguish that from mere negligent okay it must be gross to make it to make the 
officer civilly liable. Okay? So, what will constitute gross? The amount of damage. Okay? Um, but it's just, if it is just a slight injury, okay, or a slight, um, um, just mere inadvertence, then it, that cannot fall under gross negligence, which means that still, the public officer cannot be held civilly liable. Okay? Now, the word here used is only civilly liable, meaning he cannot pay if it is in accordance on in accordance in performance of his official function. But it doesn't mean he cannot be held criminally liable because there are offenses under the criminal under the revised penal code. Okay. If the public officer acted or did not perform under the criminal offense on malfeasance or misfeasance. Now, any public officer without just cause neglects to perform a duty within a period fixed by law or regulation or within a reasonable period, if none is, shall be liable for the damages to the private party concerned without prejudice to such other liabilities as may be prescribed by law. The general principle as discussed okay, on liability of officers is that generally you cannot <coughs> you cannot punish a you cannot a state is immune from suit right okay state is immune from suit it is pre presumed that all acts actually of a government officer is in performance of their duty so it is there is a presumption of regularity okay but if it's very clear that the public officer acted, okay, without just cause, neglects to perform a duty, okay, without, uh, within a period fixed by law or regulation, he did not perform. It could be malfeasance or misfeasance. Within a reasonable period of time, shall be held liable for damages, okay, to the private par party. Now, there is a law passed. Under red, red Tape Act, ARTA, Anti Red, anti -red Tape Act, ARTA, now, where it states there that there must be a corresponding number of days for a government employee to respond. Okay, like if a if a um a document is asked, you have to reply within fifteen days. Okay, and it is in the law. If you cannot act within it, then you may be held liable. But I think right now, because of the pandemic, and there are so many emails that were not addressed or if not replied, I think the law must be <coughs> lenient to that. It, because it is not ordinary right now. Okay? It is not ordinary like that you will be receiving so many uh, messages. Because right now, all communication is sent to my email. And right now, I have so many things to reply. Okay? And I don't know if I re replied all of this, those emails. Because there are so many. And it may be overlooked because of so many emails that I had. Okay? And every day, there may be at least 20. And even if it's ha holiday... Even Sundays and Saturday, there are also emails that will pop in. And I have to reply. Some are even overlooked. Some I maybe I may be forgotten to reply and read. So it's not an order. That is why some of my colleagues already resigned as chairman of the department. Okay. Many resigns because it's of the difficulty of communicating that you have to up sign document which is very difficult you have to fix your signature and if your if your pdf expires uh, you really find it difficult right now in my case my pdf expires then i have to look for other means just to fix my signature in, in in a letter okay so but administration has no uh, means of resolving these problems with the with the higher office 
Anyway, that will be their problems later on. Oh. It's, it's good to have no responsibility than um, right now in this time of pandemic, it's the heads who will be suffering. Okay? Because all the communication is only through the emails. Okay? Unlike before we'll, where you have to just sign a paper using ball pen. But now, it's difficult. Really difficult. It's miserable. A head of department or superior officer shall not be civil liable for the wrongful acts or missions of duty, negligence, or misfeasance of his subordinates unless he has actually authorized by, by written order okay, the specific act or misconduct complained of. So, take note of this. <coughs> the head of the department or a superior officer shall not be civilly. Okay, again, take note of the word here. Only civilly. For the wrongful acts or omissions of duty or negligence or misfeasance of his subordinates. Okay? So, the head is not liable to the acts of his lower officer. Not civilly. He is not civilly. Eh? You are not civilly. Unless he actually authorized. The exception is when you authorize that somebody, lower employee or subordinates, by written order. So it must be in writing. If it is not in writing, then you may, be, you may not be held liable. It must be in writing. Okay? So, what what is the defense here of a subordinate as of the superior officer here? If the conduct is, if there was no written order, okay, or if you just say it, but there was no written order, then you may civilly, you may you may not be civilly liable. So to safeguard, I uh, do not put it in writing, okay. But if you are a subordinate, then do not obey as well. <laughs> Do not obey if it is not in, uh, there, was, there was no written order. Okay? So, take note of that. It's very important. Soon will you, be, you will become a department head or head of the agency. This is what you should apply. Okay? So, you are not liable unless you authorize the subordinates in writing. Okay? You are not civilly liable if it's wrongful acts or omission. Now we go to the liabilities of subordinate officers. So, uh, this will constitute several persons okay, because most of the subordinates are several compared to those superior officers. Okay, no subordinate officer or employee shall be civilly liable for acts done by him in good faith in the performance of his duties. So, what does it mean? If he only performs his job according to his duty, and it is always in good faith, okay? It's a regular job that he do for over a period of time, then he cannot be held civilly, or he cannot be civilly liable, okay? However, he shall be liable for willfully or negligent acts done by him which are contrary to law, morals, public policy, good customs, or even he acted under the orders of his instructions of his superiors. So, he will be held liable for willfully. Okay? He knows the consequence, but still he do it. Okay, and he knows perhaps illegal, it's contrary to law, good morals, public policy, or even a good customs. Okay? So, that is the liability of a subordinate. Okay, again, if we do it uh, on a normal way, and do it in good faith, then he cannot be held liable. But if he negligently, okay, what do you mean by negligently? He knows the consequence, but he's so careless okay or willfully 
he did it knowing all the consequences that might be Sarah Inogu. Someone joins the point. Okay, admit. Okay. Negligent acts done by him are contrary to law. So, even if um, if he willfully and negligently, what do you mean by negligently? She is so careless. Okay. Which causes damage, then he may be held um, civilly liable. So take note, it's civil. But there are other laws that may prosecute a person for other damages. It may even be criminal liability. Okay. So we have to be very careful if we work in government. There are other liabilities. It could be civil, administrative, okay, or even criminal. So if it's a criminal, then probably there will be <coughs> imprisonment. Now we go to official oath. Oath of office for the public officers and employees. Okay, all officers and employees of the government, including every member of the armed forces, shall before entering upon the discharge of his duties take an oath of affirmation to uphold and defend the constitution that he will bear the truth, faith, true faith and allegiance to it, obey the laws, okay, legal orders, and decree promulgated by the duly constituted authorities will well and faithfully discharge to the best of his ability the duties to the office of the office or position upon which he is about to enter and that he voluntarily assumes the obligation imposed by his oath of office without mental reservation or purpose of evasion okay so when you work in government there is an oath okay um you swear to the Bible and reading that that oath. Okay. So you have to do it really faithfully, as if you're swearing it to God that you have to obey the laws. We go to officers authorized to administer. Who will administer? The following officers have a general authority to administer oath, notaries, public, members of the judiciary, clerks of court. The Secretary of either House of Congress of the Philippines, of Departments, Bureau of Directors, Register of Deeds, Provincial Governors, and Lieutenant Governors, City Mayors, Municipal Mayors, and any other officer in the service of the Government of the Philippines whose appointment is vested by the President. So all those um, appointed by the President, okay, in, even in civil service, uh, as long as they are the head Okay, the head of the administration, then they can administer oath. Oath may also be administered by any officer whose duties as defined by law, regulation, require presentation to him, any statement under oath. So in case of, of government or a school where you studied, it is the chief administrative officer who, who, who will administer the oath. Okay, the duty to administer officers authorized to administer oath with the exception of a notary public, municipal judges, and clerks of court are not obliged to administer oath or executive certificates saves in matters of public businesses, official businesses. And with the exception to the notary public, the officer performing the service in, host, in those matters are charged no fee unless specifically authorized by law. Okay. So here we have annual reports, not important, content of the reports, not important. <coughs> there the, the copies of that will, will be deposited in the archives. We go to public contracts and convenience conveyance. Contracts and conveyance con may be executed for and in behalf of the government or any of its branches, subdivisions, or agencies, or instrumentalities, including government-owned and controlled corporations, whether demanded by the exigency or exigencies of the service, and as long as the same are not prohibited by law. So, 
who will sign the contract is the head of the agency it cannot be any other person so any contracts entered into must be <coughs> between the heads of the agency and the other contracting party and head also of another another office but in government only the head of the agency why because the head of the agency serves as the alter ego of the president okay so it is as if it's entered by the president himself now whenever a real property of the government is authorized by law to be conveyed okay the the deed of conveyance shall be executed in behalf of the government by the following now for property belonging to or titled in the name of the republic of the philippines by the president so it is the president who will um sign unless the authority is therefore expressly vested by law to another officer so generally um, authorizing it to convey uh, the conveyance of a government property Okay, or entitled of the name of the Philippines, it should be the president. For property belonging to the Republic of the Philippines, but titled in the name of any political subdivision, like an LGU, okay, it belongs to the president to the Philippines, but entitled that the title is in the name of the LGU or any corporate agency. It will be by the executive head of the agency, okay, like a land owned by the state it's in you for example then it will be entered by the head of the agency okay by the president of of the of the school not the president of the philippines okay the authority to convey the pro other property whenever a property other than a real other than real when you say real these are immovable properties okay and the other one as opposed to or um, personal it refers to movable properties example of movable properties we have ha um, cars um, vehicle vehicles or cars and any other things that can be moved like jewelries whereas real are those non movable like house and lot now when the property other than real is authorized to be conveyed so meaning personal properties the contract or deed should be executed by the head of the agency with the approval of the department head okay so for example uh, in 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 the lgu like um, the province any any contract entered into example of that is the conveyance of a real property or personal property then it will be approved by the board okay or the department head okay so when the operation of agency regularly involved the sale or other disposition of personal property the deed shall be executed by any officer or employee expressly authorized for that purpose now it's easy to convey personal property than real so in that case, you only need a an approval by the board or board resolution, okay, allowing or authorizing the head of agency to dispose or convey the property. Okay. Now, how about conveyance of a national government property to local governments? So from national, okay, transferring it to local. What's the rule? When the real property belonging to national government is needed for school purposes or other official uses by the local government, the president shall authorize to its transfer. Okay, take note, president here refers to the president of the Philippines and the department head or other authority concerned shall execute in favor of the local government necessary deed of conveyance by way of gift sale or exchange or otherwise and upon such terms as shall be interest for the parties concerned so what does it mean it will be the head of the president through its head okay 
uh, department heads or cabinet secretaries converting lands by way of a gift or a sale or exchange or otherwise or upon such terms as shall be interest shall be for the interest of the parties concerned it could be other forms but the process here is that it must be approved by the president through its heads of agency okay so before it will be transferred to the local government now we go to the execution of contracts contracts in behalf of the republic of the philippines shall be executed of course by the president unless authority therefore is expressly vested by law or by him with any other officer generally if it involves the republic of the philippines then it will be signed by the president himself contracts in behalf of political subdivisions like um, the lgu um, province city municipality and corporate agencies like uh, well let's say new jsis um, up ctu um, sss pagibig these are corporate agencies or instrumentalities it will be approved by the respective governing boards so what mean by governing boards the their board of for schools owned by by their public is the board of regions okay for for other offices it may be governed by 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 their board okay or councils okay for the LGU, like Provincial um, Municipal Council or City Council, and executed by their respective executive heads. Notice, this execute, these boards and councils represent the, what body again, of the national, of, of the, or what branches of government? This belongs to the legislative branch, right? So, they make the law, they are the one who plan, but for its execution, it will be by the respective executive heads. Okay? So, for, let's say, governing boards, like provincial board. Okay? So, or municipal council. They will pass a law or resolution allowing or authorizing the mayor to enter into contract. Okay? So, there should be so there should always be a resolution or board approval without that board approval or or resolution from the council the executive head is not authorized okay you take note of that situation because there are many cases actually filed or in fact uh, in court over over contracts where there's no board approval okay or even if there is a board approval but if the executive the the succeeding executive heads after losing the previous um executive heads will no longer execute okay even if there's a contract or they will make it a, they will make it sure that it will not be the project will not be pursued it will not be continued in what in what way by challenging or questioning that there was no board approval if they, even if there is why because you know when you had a project it may be a a symbol of the previous administration okay example of that is the is the project of the former former governor okay of a certain building in front of the provincial in beside the provincial capital of Cebu okay but it was not approved it was not continued by the succeeding administration after after losing the election okay although there may be um approval by the board okay but still they are they question it okay Now, we still have 30 minutes. I'm going to 